So glad you're with us for this latest edition of the Broadway show. It's going to be a good one. I'm Tamsin Fidel. She's forever in blue jeans. Robin Herter is one of the stars of A Beautiful Noise, the Neil Diamond musical. She plays Neil's wife of 25 years, Marsha Murphy. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. Robin Herter is definitely wowing crowds in the Feel Good musical. We met up before matinee to talk about her impactful year and why this gig feels like home. Robin, it's so good to see you on this end of the pandemic. <laughs> I know, we it's did so it. nice to see you. I know that you are someone who lives in gratitude, especially about your career. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this is such a great moment for you because, you know, during the pandemic, Moulin Rouge, you yes. obviously were Nini in Moulin Rouge, it shut down and you got a Tony nomination while you were at home. That, that just suddenly happened. So wild. While you were waiting for the show to come back. Tony Awards happened, the show finally came back. Now you're back on Broadway in a new musical, A Beautiful Noise. I know that you don't always assume the next job is right around the corner. No, never. Once I left Moulin Rouge, I was so prepared to just be a mom, take a seat in my house in the woods and just enjoy life, mm -hmm. uh, give my body a rest finally. But when this audition came up just two months later and then I saw what the role was and I was like, I think I should probably go in for this. And I did, and it happened so quickly. Wow. And then all of a sudden, within three days, I had another Broadway show. And that's when you just kind of, um, you release and you throw your hands up and say, take it away, universe, <laughs> because I'm not gonna fight it. I'm like, clearly this is meant to be, and I'm so grateful and I'm going to embrace it and go on another journey that was completely unexpected. Never in my life would I ever expect that I would be starring in the Neil Diamond musical. <laughs> <laughs> right. I still laugh. It is the most fun I've ever had, and wow. it's the happiest I've ever been on stage. Why do you think this show is giving you all that? I think there's so, so many things. Number one, the people. Not every day does a group of people like right. this all come together in, in one environment, and it just makes for a really enjoyable workplace. But also, the nature of this show, mm. I love shows that make you feel all the feels. Mm -hmm. And when people hear Neil Diamond, you know, the Neil Diamond musical, right. they're gonna be like, okay, sequins, and yes, yes. <laughs> you, you get the sequins, <laughs> and you get the fringe, and you get the songs, but you get his story as well. And um, a lot of people don't know it. Yeah. Mark Jacoby, who yes. plays Neil now, and his performance that he gives in this show, especially at the end, the audience isn't expecting that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we get to just give you exactly what you want. We flip it around and we get to just embrace this glorious music and this amazing musician and get to sing together and dance together and hold hands and put our arms around each other and sway back and forth. And it's like anybody who does not feel that kind of flaming sparkle joy that's happening at the end of this show, then you don't have a soul. You do this uh, fantastic number, Forever in Blue Jeans, mm -hmm. which is a Neil Diamond song I never thought twice about. Really? I, I never really had a moment with it. Now I'm obsessed with it because of you. I'm most obsessed with this number than anything else on Broadway right now. I, really? I, I, yes, I wanna go see Aww. that number. I'm gonna come to the matinee with you and just watch that number. It is so, it is so good. I was screaming at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it so much. Thank it was you. so good. I it was mean... amazing. You play Marsha, Neil Diamond's second wife. Yes who he is no longer married to. Nope. And Neil Diamond is around. Yeah. He, he's mm -hmm. very much involved in yeah. the process of this. You're playing his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Is that odd? Is there any, is there uh, anything? Yeah. I mean, obviously there's, and, and there's a lot of her story in, in the musical. There really is, yeah. which I, I wasn't expecting. I have to say, I, this was very intimidating for me yeah, because sure. the roles that I've been able to create on Broadway have been um, made up <laughs> and they've <laughs> right. not worn a lot of clothing yeah. and they really like to yeah. dance and express themselves. So this one, I'm like, hmm, not only do, do I get to wear clothes in this show, um, <laughs> I'm creating a, a, a real human that's mm -hmm. here, that's alive. And with Marsha, um, there is not a whole lot of information about her. She's, she's led a very, very private life mm. since the divorce. and. 
she helped create this lifestyle, this Neil Diamond that everyone adores and loves, which kind of turned into a beautiful monster. And um, unfortunately, relationships are the ones that are sacrificed. And it was, you know, 25 years. I saw the show a couple days before opening. Mm -hmm. I found out a week later that your dad, Dennis, had passed. Mm -hmm. I was extra blown away having witnessed your performance that day, knowing that that had happened. Yeah. And I, I, I have to ask you, did the, did the whole cast know? No. You were really focused on the good of the show and getting the show opened. Mm -hmm. And I just don't, I, I just can't imagine what that was like. I literally, on Tuesday morning when I found out, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, should I run home to Maine and be with my family? And it was, you know, my mom and my brothers that were like, Robin, what are you gonna do? You gonna sit here and cry with us? Dad knows this is the most important, important week. And he would be so upset if you missed it because of him. And because the number one thing my dad loved most in this world is watching me perform. And I knew, I, I knew deep down after like, freaking out for the whole day. I was like, this is what he wants. But I didn't tell anybody just because I'm always a mom and I'm always, I am always want to take everybody under my wing and, and let yeah. take care of them first. And I didn't, I didn't say anything until um, I wanted to wait until after opening because then I was going to go home to Maine for the service and everything. And but on Friday, the Friday before opening, um, his obituary had come out. And so I started getting messages from people in Maine. and. These are some of the closest people in my life now, and I'm like, this doesn't feel right. Um, so I told them all, and I said, what I don't, I don't want any sad eyes. Unless I have sad eyes, let's just, like, what I need is exactly what we're doing every night. It was actually a beautiful escape mm -hmm. to go into the theater, and you just weirdly compartmentalize your feelings. Yeah. And it's not that you forget about it, it just goes back there. And it was actually so therapeutic to just, like, shut it off and just get to do what I love most. I'm just very grateful from the time that I had with him and and how amazingly supportive he was. One of the most challenging things I, I've gone through, um, I mean, both the way 2022 started and the way it ended, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so it's been, it's been a lot, but I'm okay. I mean, I'm a tough cookie. Again, I thank God for this show. I thank God for Broadway. I thank God that I, I get to do this life because it's, um, it's just so special and I'm so grateful. You already referenced, but earlier in the year you had a miscarriage mm -hmm. and you talked about that uh, publicly. So you've been through a lot, career and, and personally, so I'm kind of wondering what's sort of recalibrated for you over the last couple of years. Thank God I have a support system like I do with my family. First and foremost, Clyde. He's he's an extraordinary man, an extraordinary partner. We we'll have been together for 20 years this August. Oh, amazing! Crazy. I love. It. I was um, just about to ask you. Yeah, 20 years, wow. babies. Um, <laughs> but to have that line of communication with him, um, to to really be able to feel free to honestly talk through everything yeah. that I'm feeling, is so important. My my circle of friends, um, my close friends, they're the ones that that just helped me keep going, having these conversations. It's really just talking about it. And I feel like, especially with miscarriage, and I've talked about this very openly, that it's so strange that this is, it's not, I used to say it's one in four, it's literally like one in three um, that women experience this. Oh, so many of my best friends have experienced it, but we still have this feeling like we can't talk about it. Right. And that's why mental health with women and everything is because we feel like we have to be silenced and and then we suffer and knowing me i'm like mm -mm. <laughs> no, 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 no. i'm like i don't no one tells me what to do i do whatever i want to do and i realized when i left moulin rouge i was not okay mm -hmm. i mean it was very traumatic that i was like oh i'm leaving because i'm having a baby and then i lost the baby and then i'm like well i'm still out of a job um and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna breathe and take some time but i started here, you know, everyone's like, how's your body? How's your body feeling? Because everyone thought I was leaving because I was tired or my body was hurting because right. Nini is such a demanding role. Right. And that made me very upset because I'm like, I'm not a weakling. <laughs> I was like, I would never, ever, ever, ever leave the show early because my body hurt. And I realized I was, I was getting very angry and upset. And I just talked to Clyde and I said, I realize I, it's because I'm not being honest. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, this is, this is why I'm having a really hard time dealing with this and having these outbursts. So I let it out and it was the 
best thing I could have done for myself because this is when social media can be such a beautiful, beautiful place right. where you can find this community and bring people together and help each other. I, when I tell you, probably over a thousand messages I got from women who are like, thank you. It actually turned into a, a really beautiful moment. It's like, out of something that's so horrific and, it, and traumatizing, I, I was able for myself to turn it around into something that was really beautiful is like, that's, that's what healing is. So we have to get you to the theater. Let's 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 walk to, walk down on. It's 8th cold out. So let's put our. our I know, but up. I'm from Maine, so <laughs> that's why everyone's like, "Aren't you cold?" And I'm like, Maine. So you're actually at the Broadhurst, which is one of my favorite theaters. I love. I have so many great memories from like my early theater going at the mm -hmm. Broadhurst. It's a beautiful theater. The first time I walked in, I felt like I'd officially arrived. Even though I've, this is my seventh Broadway show, I was like, something about this seems so historic. Yeah, it's really, I feel very, very fortunate and special to be working on the Broadhurst. This area, do you remember like the first time you came to New York and like... Oh, do I? Yeah. Oh my God, it's it's burned in my memory. Oh, look. Oh yeah, there's your, look. there over there, there's your billboard. There's me. Yeah. Well, sort of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my first time here was, uh, I was 11 years old. We stayed at the Marriott Marquis. Yeah, and that's when we saw Damn Yankees was playing Oh, at... wow, which I know was a big one for you. And that was my first Broadway show, and I mean, I've told you this, I've told everybody this, but I was <laughs> like, that's what I wanna do when I grow up, and uh, and I, I am. But you actually have a really healthy uh, work-life balance. You know, I you try. live outside the city yep. with, with your husband and your adorable son. Hudson. Yes. You wake up and have coffee in yeah. my in my kitchen and you get to look out and see birds and deer and bunnies and just and, and nature and my son wakes up and he goes outside and he goes, Oh mommy, it smells like winter. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, I did it. And then he comes here and he goes absolutely berserk and I'm like, see you can have this. Yeah. You have access to this, but we're gonna go home and we're gonna live our quiet yeah. lives and yeah. it's a nice it's a nice reset recharge you're getting ready for the matinee the matinees are lit they are as the children say lit it's our first matinee i didn't realize my mic was up because i'm about to start the scene into song sung blue uh -huh. and my mic was up <laughs> and at the end of crackling rosie everyone's screaming i'm like oh my god these people are lit <laughs> 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 and it was broadcast it was in the all, theater. It just brought <laughs> radiation. <That's amazing. laughs> oh, look, it's you. It's hilarious. I love it. All right, well, thank you so much. Go, um, go kill him. I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to kill him twice today. <laughs> twice. Two show day. Mm -hmm. Broadway. That's you can good. do it. I know I you know. can do it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm still excited, so that's good. Awesome. Yeah. All right, have a good one. Good Thanks, to see baby. you. All right. All right. I'll see ya. All right, bye.